I'm in my AWS console. Let's see how we can define a task definition that will use the repository we just created so that we can run that task on a cluster. To do that, go to ECS section of the console. Go to task definitions. And then create new task definition. The type of the task you need to select is Fargate because we are going to use uh, the Fargate cluster to run uh, our containers. And then click next step. You can give it a name, uh, something like my wolf website task because this is supposed to run the uh, website. Uh, the task role you don't need to specify. Uh, if you want your application to access AWS resources, you need to define a task role so that the containers running inside this task uh, will be able to access AWS resources. As of now, our simple website does not access AWS resources, so you don't need to specify a task role. Keep the network mode as uh, the default one. And for the task memory, allocate about uh, one gigabyte of memory. And for the task CPUs, allocate about uh, one uh, vCPU. We can then allocate fraction of the CPU to our containers. So you can find that if you do that, you will find there's a certain ratios that you need to specify. So the valid memory range has to be about two gigabyte. So you can have a two gigabyte and one vCPU memory in this Fargest uh, task definition. So the next step is to add the container. So click add container. You need to define the, uh, the container name. So this is uh, my wolf app. And the image name, you need to point into the repository URL along with the tag. To find the repository URL, you can go into your ECS repository again. Back in the console, go to ECS, go to repositories. You can find that my wolf app repository is here. And this is the repository URL, so copy it. And the tag that we need to publish is this latest tag. So let's go into this uh, location and then type that URL. And you need to also specify what is the version or the tag that you need to use. In this case, it's the latest. So for the memory limit, uh, you can give something like 512. Uh, for the port mapping, uh, you need to the, define the container port. So it's going to run on container port 80. You don't need to specify any command. Uh, for the CPU limit also, you can put something like half of the vCPU, which is 512. So a full CPU is considered as 1024. If you want to give half a CPU for the website, you can give something like 512. You can keep all these entries, the default names. Mount points, we are not going to define any mount points. And you can auto configure the CloudWatch logs. So any logs related to this uh, task will go into this location. Everything looks good, click add. So when you do that, you can find that out of this task definition, I have already used 512 shared of 1024 CPU units because I'm allocating one vCPU I have 1024 CPU units and I already use a 512 of that or half a vCPU. Memory, I have enough here. So you can add multiple containers. For example, if you have two web application, maybe you have one web application and a batch loading task that you want to run in parallel. You can add multiple containers into a task definition. As of now, I have only a very simple web application. So let's keep this like this. So all things looks good, click create task. So that will create the task definition. So let's go to the view task definition. 
So you have the task definition given over here. So if you go to task definition also, you can find that my wolf app website task. So you can have multiple tasks for multiple websites. So if you are going to have your finance web application, you will have another task. You may have your human resource application, which have another task. So that's how you organize your task into a set of uh, containers. So we have our task definition. We of course need to now create a cluster to run this task. In the next lab, let's see how we can create a cluster to run this My Wolf website task.